Um, yeah, okay, so we're going to put a GPS unit on you today. Okay. Um, GPS units will track where you're running around the field, all your accelerations, your sprints, um, they detect one of these VX Sport um, athlete performance undergarments okay. um, for me, please. Nice. And uh, with that, we'll also be putting on our heart rate monitor to check your heart rate. Okay. Um, so if you don't mind putting this on for me, okay. um, with a VX Sport at the front. Okay, tight. Yeah, nice and tight, it needs to be. Um, if you put this heart rate monitor on for me, we will just click it in here on the side. Okay, so this one's going to monitor your heart rate and be able to track. So if you've got a, a very, very fast, high intensity uh, sprint, we'll be able to see how your body reacts from a heart rate point of view okay. um, and how quickly it takes for you to recover from that high intensity sprint. Okay, um, this, is the, this is the little GPS unit. Okay. okay. That's about the size, as you can see, a little bit bigger than a matchbox, very, very light. So this is going to go into a pocket on your back um, and it's going to communicate with the satellites which are orbiting uh, the Earth at the moment and it will talk to the satellite five times every one second so it will be able to track uh, everywhere that you're going. All right, so let's pop that in the back, in the little pocket. Okay, and that's basically it. Sixty. Okay, it's still busy. It's just a little bit of delay. Call about a eighty meter, eighty meter sprint. <laughs> uh, sprint. <laughs> Your max speed was sixteen point one kilometers um, for that. It was exactly eighty meters, um, and it's registered you as, as having one one sprint. That was to go. If you were to go for a run around those poles again, Dan. Okay. That gra okay. graph should eventually start. Okay. So here's where Dan was standing still with us. There he started his run as he turned around the poles. Okay, the dip is a change in speed and he's on his way back. So that line going up was him running towards the poles. The decrease in speed was him obviously decelerating, turning around the pole, accelerating back to us and he's come to a stop um, over here. And now the red line is starting to pick up his heart rate. Um, as he's starting to, to sweat a little bit, <laughs> which is a bit concerning because he should be fitter than that. Um, so his live heart rate at the moment, 128, 125, 121. So his heart rate recovery is quite good, which does actually show that he's quite, quite fit. Um, so he's able to work very, very hard, but then recover very, very quickly before the next, uh, the next bout. So his heart rate's already come down to 102 beats per minute and it was up at uh, sure, what was it? 1, 130, 140 in the span of a couple of 10, 15, 20 seconds round about there. It's already dropped down to 89, 87, 86. It's getting less and less and less. And it looks like it's just over one, 150, it's probably 160 meters because he's run there and back twice now. And then the red is his actual distance above a high intensity speed, which is above 18 kilometers per hour. So if we were to ask Dan to do a full on sprint now, go as quick as he can, which we won't because he hasn't warmed up 100% correctly. Um, that red line will obviously increase because that's the distance that he's covering above 18 kilometers an hour. Um, his total distance was obviously increased as well because total distance doesn't matter what speed you're traveling at, um, the distance will just accumulate. The red uh, bar will just tell us how much of that distance, how much of his total distance is he covering above a certain um, speed and that is for us is about 18 kilometers per hour um, anything above that he's moving quite quickly and we, took, we uh, classify that as a high intensity sprint as a sports scientist and somebody with the HP program what do you guys learn from from all these numbers you just saw yeah well I mean this gives us um, a fantastic insight into um, what our athletes actually go through on the field um, in the past, we had to kind of guess how tough our athletes uh, or how tough a match might be or how easy a, might, uh, a certain match might be, um, but we never had proper numbers and values um, that we could uh, refer back to. And um, the GPS system gives us access to those numbers that we used to probably have to guess in the past. Um, this allows us to obviously plan our seasons better, uh, plan our training sessions better, um, because ultimately we want to train how we play and, uh, and a GPS system like the VX Sport uh, system allows us to do that. Awesome. Dan, um, just tell us, yeah. I mean, how do you guys like to, to see these numbers and, and how do you guys use it? 
Well, I thoroughly enjoy it. Um, it's a way to almost get credit for your hard work on the pitch. Um, sometimes if you're not scoring the goal or you're not part of the goal or whatever it may be, you don't get acknowledged. But with the, the GPS and all the equipment we've been given by HP, uh, Marty's HP, it's really helped a lot. So for, for instance, I'm a defender. I enjoy getting as far as possible, so running a lot, clocking about to uh, seven and a half kilometers per match which is awesome and then we have a little competition between the defenders who can run the furthest and who's the fastest in the team and who's working the hardest so it's, it's a lot of fun with the team it also ups the banter yeah.